Hi, and welcome to Fishing with David Pyle. It's April 10th. I'm on the Willamette River today fishing for Spring Chinook. And I'm going to do a little how to video because this is pretty easy fishing. I'm going to show a little bit of a rig for Spring Chinook fishing. Um, first off, I've got my termination point from my braid, which is, I use 50 pound braid. And um, I've got this bead chain so that things spin real nice, connected to a 40 pound test line before a flasher, another bead chain, then my flasher, another swivel after the flasher, and then I go with about three to four feet on the, in murkier water, this is actually a little longer, but three to four feet with a mooching rig. Um, and the dirtier the water, the darker the color of the water, the shorter you want this when it's closer to your flasher. And then we have a slider weight, in this case with a about 12, ounce, or 12 inches of, of lightweight line in case we're going to bounce the bottom. And for the most part in this river we're going to be fishing suspended, but we might end up in the Multnomah Channel area where we'll actually put our stuff on the bottom. And having that 12 inches keeps us from getting our hooks tangled on the bottom, uh, hung up on the bottom, and in our gear getting beat up. So with this mooching rig, and in this case I use sliders, some people like to use a fixed, uh, I'm going to put a plug or a cut plug or plug cut piece of herring which I use a little template and sometimes I use the coho side and sometimes I use the chinook side. Today I'm going to use the coho just gives it a little different roll. Um, take the first hook, in my case, in a lot of people's case, they go through the long side. I like to go through the short side, and I like to come out somewhere about as far as I can with the tip of that hook. Keep it down as far as I can. I don't want it up here near the edge. And then you have to gently pull it through so you don't rip the side of your herring. So I kind of put my thumb on that skin and kind of wiggle it through with these pre-made hooks. If I make my own hooks, this is a lot better because I can, I can have a real small um, tie on it and it slides through. But as you can see, it didn't rip it up too bad. You want to keep that as clean as possible. Um, let the trailing hook hang free. Can't get it caught in my gloves. And I take Mark. Mark's driving our boat right now, and I need him to get out closer to the center of the river so we don't get hung up on the bottom right here. So, my next task here is to take my front hook, and my front hook is going to go just off center of the herring, so just off to the big side of the center, and I want to. I want this hook to come through close to the front of the fish, but if I go too far down here toward my finger, the fish will have a big tail swag, and the closer to the front, then you get a nice tight um, spiral. It's a, it's a really good spin, but you don't want to be so close that it rips out easily either, so there's some balance in there that you're going to have to find. Again, that's what it looks like looking down on the center of the fish. And now we're going to put this in the water and just make sure it spins because you never want to drop your gear in and um, have it not spinning. It's got to work if you want to catch salmon. So I'm going to have our cameraman come over here as I put this in the water. I'm going to verify that this herring is rolling properly. We'll show you a nice spin. I'll bring it out here in front of the boat. You can kind of see a nice tight roll it's getting. Looks good. I can see my hooks are a little tangled. Let me fix that real quick. And then um, we're going to drop this down. Somehow my hooks got crossed up. Don't want that. This is a really good check before you put your gear down that everything is working properly. Again, verify that this is going to roll properly. As you can see in the water, that nice tight roll, that's what you're looking for. And I'm leaving the guts in, so you might see a little 
stuff hanging by the front it's just the guts and that's okay it's nice scent okay and now um, what we do on this river since we're fishing suspended we're in 47 feet deep of water right now you wouldn't put your stuff down on the bottom which is what we do typically in the Columbia River is we go to the bottom and we come up one crank and our our lead bounces off the bottom so we call it bouncing bottom here we're going to fish suspended so with my gear up at the top of the water about where it would sit in my rod holder I'm going to go out what we call poles and this is simply pulling from the reel to the first eyelet so that was one pull two three four five six seven eight nine ten and set the bail make sure that my my drag is set to my liking I kind of go uh, relatively light on my drag um, in this case I'm out ten poles on this side rod and my rear rod I'm gonna go out a little bit deeper because I want to try different depths and see maybe where a fish is gonna take the hook so this one's out 12 poles right now um, so that's a little primer on how we fish in the Willamette River uh, we'll, hopefully in this video I'll give you a little more instruction on other things, but um, that's just a real quick and dirty uh, on hooking up herring, rigging it with a mooching rig. Uh, David Pyle, Portland, Oregon.